What's up, MetaNerds? This video comes from the suggestions list over at MetaNerds.com. If you want to add your own idea, or upvote other suggestions, just click on the card that should have popped up on the top right of this video. This is the Valiant Class Star Destroyer, a fan-made ship like the Asserter Class, but this one has yet to make it into official material. That being said, we do have a ton of stats and some interesting history for it. The first thing that you might notice is that it is longer and thinner than most capital ships, due to it being 1,648 meters or 1.02 miles long, about a VT-49 decimator longer than the Imperial 1 class Star Destroyer, while being 588 meters or 0.37 miles wide, making it only about half as wide as the ISD, and a Jawa Sandcrawler wider than the Venator. And at a height of 302 meters or 991 feet, it was about an ATM-6 taller than the Venator. The Valiant had these four primary, two secondary, and four tertiary thrusters, which gave it an acceleration of 3,600 Gs, greater than that of the Venator and the Imperial 1, while its top atmospheric speed of 975 km per hour, or 606 miles per hour, was exactly the same as the Venator, while being slightly slower than the ISD. It was equipped with a Class II hyperdrive, the same as the ISDs and the Super Star Destroyers, while its 120,000 light year range was about half that of the Acclimator class assault ship, but still enough to travel the entire length of the galaxy, or go from Coruscant to the Outer Rim and back, before needing to refuel. Its shields were more powerful than the Venator and the Victory, at 3600 SPD, but the information on the hull strength is unknown. Its armament and ship complement is where it really shines, with 22 heavy dual turbolaser turrets, 8 medium dual turbolaser cannons, 50 point defense laser cannons, 8 tractor beams, and 8 heavy proton torpedo tubes, each with 32 torpedoes each, for a total payload of 256. This is almost 3 times the heavy turbo lasers of the Venator, 4 times the medium cannons, only 2 less point defense cannons, with the same amount of tractor beams and torpedoes. So the real difference is in the heavy and the medium turbo laser cannons, which made the Valiant far better for ship to ship combat, allowing it to focus on the largest of the enemy's capital ships, while its starfighters and bombers could either mop up the enemy starfighters or provide more precise attacks on key parts of enemy ships, like shield generators and weapon emplacements. Since it was deployed during the Clone Wars, and it was bigger than the Venator, we could imagine that it could carry at least 192 V-Wings, or V-19 Torrent Starfighters, 36 ARC-170s, 192 Eta-2 Interceptors, and 40 LAATI gunships. But considering that it was more focused on ship-to-ship -ship warfare, I think it would be more specialized than the Venator's complement, perhaps more of a focus on bombers, so I don't think it would carry V-Wings, so it would keep the 192 V-19 Starfighters, since they have a respectable concussion missile payload, and could swap out the Etas for 48 Y-Wings, a number I think roughly makes sense given that they are about 4 times the size of the Eta 2, so 192 divided by 4. I think you could up the ARC-170s to around 66, taking 30 LAATI gunships away, since they are of similar dimensions, but still leaving 10 gunships modified for space travel so that you could board an enemy ship if necessary. Of course, these numbers would be even higher, since the ship was larger, and I think it wouldn't worry about carrying walkers or other vehicles for a land invasion, since we are told that the Valiant was often used to escort Acclimator-class assault ships, so better leave the invasion force on the ships that were built for that purpose. Now, about this forward-facing hangar bay. This was similar to the older Republic-era Harrower-class Dreadnought, and I think both look amazing, though a critique for both of these vessels is that since most ships are designed to have the max amount of firepower be able to fire forward, important for attacking or pursuing enemy ships, given that the sloping, arrowhead design of many capital ships makes it so that a turbo laser located on the back right side cannot fire at an enemy that is on the left side of you towards the front. So if you don't want to have your starfighters blasted as they come out of this forward hangar bay, you need to approach the enemy by either showing your port or starboard side, which increases your profile given how long this ship is, and it necessarily removes a lot of your cannons from the fight. Now it could enter showing its top side, but this would be the largest profile of all possible options, and though it is interesting to consider how a ship could be used in space battles, where terms like up and down are meaningless concepts, but if we're honest, that's not really how we see ships used in Star Wars. But to the Valiant's credit, 
this isn't much more vulnerable than the opening forward hangar bay of the Venator, and it does have two other hangar bays on the sides, and we can imagine that Starfighter traffic was directed through whichever of these exits made the most sense, though this would have to slow down the release of its massive complement. Maybe one day we'll get a ship that has hangar bays towards the rear, exiting away from all of that incoming fire, and positioned around the normally stronger shield generators that protect the bridge. As for its history, it was used most notably during the Kybe System campaign, the Battle of Ophion, and the Battle of Lechlite, core planets that make me think that this oversized Venator was used as a sort of Republic Dreadnought to strengthen up the core. This role was carried over into the Imperial Era, where they were mostly seen defending the core world and capital planet that is Coruscant, and the deep core planet Bis, which was the location of Palpatine's Imperial Citadel, which housed his backup clone bodies. Though some of these ships were known to lock down worlds flirting with the idea of rebellion, so think a similar role to the Golan defense platforms, while a few fell into the hands of the Hex Union, an Imperial splinter faction that grew out of the Imperial Collapse after the Battle of Endor. So that's it for its history, and the only cool behind the scenes fact is that it has been brought to life via a mod for Empire at War, and though the original creator is unknown, here are the credits for the people that made the mod, and remember that this is the top rated suggestion over on the MetaNerds lore tab on MetaNerds.com. But more important than all that, remember, you can't get much cooler than a Harrower-Venator crossover, and the Force will be with you. Always.